Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, recently, I've had several people reach out to me about Plex and issues that they've run into while installing Plex uh, using one of my very first Docker tutorials. Uh, so today I wanna to kind of cover that uh, and talk about uh, kind of some of the workarounds that I found in order to get Plex to work in Docker. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna kind of uh, double dip on this one. Uh, this is going to be, uh, a Raspberry Pi video, since we're kind of in the middle of the Raspberry Pi series. Uh, this should also apply to desktop processors as well. Uh, so just know that this, this should work on either platform. Um, but there are some things that are currently wrong with the, uh, the latest uh, tag on the Linux server.io Plex image. So let's jump over to my desktop here. Okay, so here we are on my uh, desktop, my dashboard, whatever you wanna call it here. Uh, we can see that uh, it's been up for just a couple of minutes, had to reboot, ran into an issue uh, while I was actually recording the previous segment. So uh, we're back here, everything here looks good. Our, our CPU loads are fairly low, our temperatures are low, uh, our CPU frequencies are, are ranging between, you know, 600 megs and 2000 megs. So it's kind of going through some fluctuations and that's pretty normal stuff. Um, what happens though, if we come over here, uh, we take a look at this stack and I, I will have this available, um, well, the, the fixed version of this available in the description down below where you can go ahead and grab this. Um, but, but what we're gonna take a look at first here is we're gonna use a Linux server, uh, their latest Plex uh, uh, image for this. Now, you could probably use the native Plex image if you were on a desktop processor, but by default, Plex doesn't support uh, ARM architecture. So you'll wanna use something like the Linux server uh, architecture or the Linux server image for Raspberry Pi. The problem is when we run this, we're gonna run into a bit of an issue and I wanna show that. Uh, below here, we've got our PUID, PGID, we're using Docker. Uh, this Plex claim, uh, well, what we'll wanna do is actually come over here to Plex. You'll go to plex.tv uh, forward slash claim. It's gonna bring you here. You're gonna go ahead and sign in. Um, and then it's gonna give you this. So we'll just copy that. Uh, and we're gonna put that in right here. Uh, like so. It says optional. It's kind of not though. You really do need that in order for this to work properly. Below that, we've got three volumes, uh, one for our config. I've created a special, or I've appended this with Plex latest, just for the sake of this demonstration. And below that, we've got a couple of folders uh, mounted for TV and movies. Those were actually created over here in Open Media Vault. Uh, so we'll go ahead and close that since we don't really need it anymore, but that's where those folders were created. So if we come back over to here, uh, now I've already downloaded uh, all of the images for this. So this is gonna go pretty quickly on my end. It may take a little longer on your end to download these images uh, and, and set them up, that sort of thing. What I'll do is I'll click on update the stack and I'm gonna go ahead and open up. Uh, so there, there's an issue uh, that, we've, that we've run into uh, in the past. Uh, so that's that's definitely not a good sign. Uh, so let's come back um, and let's go ahead and reboot this. We're gonna restart uh, the uh, the Plex server here. We'll take a look here. There we go. So now, now we're getting somewhere. Sometimes you just gotta reboot a container. Now this all looks fine, but let's just give it a moment here. Uh, we should end up with two or three errors uh, below this where it says starting Plex media server. There they are. Uh, error starting uh, framework core for lyrics, HT backdrops, open subtitles. We may end up with actually more than this, um, depending on kind of what happens next. But uh, what we can do over here is we take a look, uh, we can see that now all of a sudden, our CPU is ramping up very, very quickly here. Um, and our temperatures are starting to go up quite a bit. Now look, we're still very, very safe uh, with this 38, 39, whatever. Uh, but the reality is, it isn't doing anything uh, at this point. So if we come over and let's just go ahead and grab this and open this up in a new, oops, on a new tab, we'll go 32400. We'll go ahead and do this. We can kind of see that nothing is happening here. Uh, it's basically non-responsive. Um, that, 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 that's not good. Like we're, let me see if we can get this to, uh, to work properly. It just, it just sits here and spins. Uh, here we can see now our, uh, our load time over the last minute is pretty much maxed out, up above 10. Uh, that's not good. Um, our CPU temperature is now over 40. Uh, we were in the low 20s earlier. Um, so we're using up a lot of CPU resources uh, for some reason with this particular image. So just lots and lots of issues here. 
Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out all these tabs. Uh, we're gonna leave that one up because we'll need it again here in a moment. Um, but what I wanna do now is actually come over to our stack, uh, come into Plex. We're just gonna kill this entirely because uh, it's not working. We're gonna go ahead and remove it. Um, and then if we give this a second, we can see this went up to 13. Uh, now, if we give this a moment, this should start coming down gradually um, as it's kind of releasing the load that the CPU had on it uh, because of uh, what, whatever was going on in that Plex image. So we're gonna let that continue go down. Our CPU temperature is still going down. All of this means that the Plex isn't running anymore and that's good. So what I wanna do is come back over to this. Uh, I'm going to change that like so. Um, and then I'm gonna do Plex, uh, I'm gonna call this fixed, like so. And then I may have to, uh, let's refresh this. Let's grab that and swap this out. Like that, and we'll click on update the stack. Again, this will go pretty quick. Now if we open this up, so now it's waiting for it to generate its config. It's going through this setup process. Uh, this is all good. Again, it's waiting for the database to, to create. Uh, so we'll give this a minute. Uh, while that's doing its thing, let's come over here. Uh, we can see that our CPU load is still going down. Uh, even though the, we're in the middle of doing something, uh, it's not nearly what it was uh, before we were at like 13. Uh, and now even, even while it's setting all of this up, uh, that CPU load is going down. So let's go back to our containers. We'll take a look. Plex says it's up and running. Um, let's look at our logs again. Starting Plex Media Server says it's done. So let's three, two, four hundred. Okay, so this is good. This is what we want to see. Uh, this is Plex trying to set up, and that's what we want to see here. Uh, even while we're on this screen, uh, we can see that our CPU load is going down. Our CPU frequency uh, is hovering at 600, and our temperatures are sub 30. So again, this is all good. Of course, your temperatures are going to vary. Uh, my Raspberry Pi is actually out in my garage, and it's fairly chilly out there. So that's why I'm getting <laughs> really good temps there. So let's come back over to here. We're going to click Got It, because I understand how this works. So. Next thing uh, we want to do, I don't want to do that. Um, you can if you want to get the Plex, uh, lifetime pass or whatever. Uh, I don't want this to be accessible from outside. Uh, I'm going to call this hell.local uh, just because. I'm going to click next. So now I'll add a library. Um, and because of the way we mounted these, if we come back to our stack and look at Plex, uh, we can see uh, here that we've got a TV folder and a movie folder, or movies folder rather. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, we'll do movies first. Uh, we'll click on add folders. We're gonna browse right here is movies. So we'll click add and we'll click add and we'll do this again. We'll do the same thing for TV shows and we'll click add and we'll browse and we'll go to TV and we'll click add and we'll click add and we'll click next. Um, we, if you wanna get apps for your phone, your smart TV, your tablet, whatever, this will tell you how to do that. We'll click next. Uh, here we can see that uh, I've already got some media on those drives. I preemptively did that uh, just so I could record this video a little faster. Uh, otherwise, it would take quite a while to move over all of this media. Um, so while this is doing its thing, uh, here we can see that I've got a couple of these uh, from previous a previous install. So I should be able to just unpin those like so. <clears throat> and uh, here we've got uh, some TV shows and we've got some movies um, and the reason I've got such a wide variety of things going on here uh, is because I want to talk about some of the issues with running uh, running a media server on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, a lot of media is coming out uh, with a an H.265 codec. It's a it's a high uh, efficiency uh, video codec. I think that's actually what it stands for. Uh, but basically, it uses a lot less. It uses more compression, so it uses less space for individual video files. And in theory, that's great. The problem is that natively, uh, Raspberry Pi doesn't have an H.265 encoder available or decoder available to it. Uh, now, I know that there are people who will come on here and say, well, Cody can do it. And that's true. They've, they've gone through a long, extensive process of being able to decode H.265 using Cody. Uh, the problem is that Plex and, of course, uh, also MB, uh, Jellyfin don't have that built in yet. So 
Uh, if we take a look like here at Firefly, uh, these Fly Firefly uh, videos are encoded in H.265. And I can, I can show you that if I come over to here um, and then I go over here, I'll just do a double backslash and I'll go to Hal like this. And if we look at uh, TV shows, go to Firefly uh, right here. Um, it says right here, uh, X265, right in the title. If I go to properties and go to details, uh, maybe not, oh, I'm on the wrong file. My bad, let's do that one. And go to properties and go to details. Uh, here, right here, we can see HEVC, H265. Um, so if I do this, I can click cancel, uh, close out of that. Uh, and if I start this, um, Basically, what will happen is it should probably start to play uh, without any issue, but within about 30 seconds or so, uh, it's going to choke. In fact, you see that it's taking a little while to even start playing the video because it's doing whatever it possibly can to start decoding it as quickly as it can for the video to start. Now, that this video file is only about 750 megabytes, um, and here we are. It finally started after about 10 seconds or so. Um, and here we are, we're kind of going around uh, the bar scene here in the opening scene of Firefly. Um, and usually within about 30 seconds or so, it will start choking. And then it will start choking about every 30 seconds thereafter, uh, unfortunately, which makes this completely unwatchable. Uh, we're talking about a 42 minute video and there it is, 25 seconds in, it started choking already. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of there. Open this back up, we'll go into movies. Uh, so I've got Avengers, uh, Age of Ultron, uh, also H.265. I've got 8mm and the new Bill & Ted. Those are both H.264. Uh, so let's come back over to here and take a look at 8mm as, as an example. Uh, you, you see immediately the poster image came up for it uh, much faster. Uh, here we are, it's already playing. Uh, so this will go uh, much, much faster using H.264 codec. Um, I'm not saying you can't watch an H.265 codec. Just understand that it, it, it will probably chug. It will probably give you a lot of issues. So if you're going to use a, a Raspberry Pi for your home media server, make sure that all of your uh, videos are encoded at, at the absolute newest codec of H.264. Anything beyond that uh, will chug and cause a lot of issues here. Uh, here we are, we're 34 seconds in, and we've had absolutely no, uh, no, no buffering or anything like that. So that just kind of explains the H.264 versus H.265 issue with using a Raspberry Pi as a home media server. Make sure your codecs are H.264 and lower. Also, while all of that was going on, we can see that our CPU usage is still uh, reasonable here. Our temperatures, uh, mid-20s, very reasonable there. Um, it never really spiked. It may have spiked uh, you know, up to 2,000 megahertz uh, briefly while it was going through some of those processes, um, but, but it, it's not maxed out using this older image. So uh, right now, for whatever reason, the image for Plex uh, from, uh, from Linux server something wrong with it using it uh, on, on a Raspberry Pi, possibly even on a desktop processor. So uh, again, if you come over uh, to the, the link in the description, there will be a version that I have tested that we're using right now uh, that's an older version that does seem to work fairly well uh, across all the devices I've tested it on. So there you go, guys. There is a Plex update, uh, both for desktop and Raspberry Pi. As far as the install process is concerned, uh, I know I kind of skimmed over a lot of the details uh, for setting up a stack, but if you've been following along with my other videos in this series, which I hope you have, if you haven't, there will be a link in the description for the rest of the videos in this Raspberry Pi series. Uh, so, so I kind of skimmed over some of that. Some of it should have been fairly intuitive based on uh, the, the previous videos that we've had. There's been more than a dozen at this point for this video series. So I didn't want to go into too much detail, uh, kind of explaining PUID and PGID and things like that. Um, but, but there's an update on Plex, uh, some of the issues that are known um, and some workarounds for them uh, for both Raspberry Pi and desktop processors. So I just want to take a quick moment to thank some of the people who have helped make this video series possible. Uh, Canakit sent over a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig. That's what we're using in this video series. So thanks to them. Argon40 sent over uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Argon40 M.2 case. Uh, Sabrent sent over a two terabyte drive and an enclosure. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for helping me uh, pay the bills and that sort of thing. If you want to become a patron, there'll be a link in the description. Also, I just launched channel memberships if you're interested in that. Uh, that will be available uh, right below this video. 
Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to uh, talk about in this video. Of course, if you've got questions, comments, thoughts, whatever, uh, definitely leave that in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.